So in the last section, we started looking at the Poisson process. And the way we looked at it there was we looked at a fixed amount of time and said that the number of arrivals in that fixed amount of time should be Poisson. So that was fixed amount of time, random number of arrivals. This time we're going to look at it a different way. And now we're going to say, for a fixed number of arrivals, let's say one arrival, for example, what's the random amount of time it should take? That is, we're going to look at the gaps between the arrivals, what are known as the holding times. And to study this, we're going to use the exponential distribution. Hopefully you've read about some reminders about the exponential distribution in the previous subsection. Also, I perhaps introduced some properties of the exponential distribution there that are new to you, but that will be important in this course. An exponential distribution is what is used for a waiting time or a holding time. So now we're going to think about a process where things arrive, but at each time we have to wait for an exponentially distributed holding time for it to arrive. So if we did have that structure, we'd have xt being equal to naught until the first arrival happens. So that would be for all times t up to t1, the first time of the first arrival, where t1 is exponentially distributed with some rate lambda. Then after that, the first arrival would have come. So we'd, we'd now be on one arrival. And that would happen from t1 up until we'd waited another holding time, t2. So that other holding time t2 plus the time t1 we'd already had would be t1 plus t2. And here the holding time t2 exponential lambda. So then we'd be at the stage where we'd had two arrivals. And that would happen from this time t1 plus t2 up until the third holding time has gone past, which would be at time t1 plus t2 being the time we'd already have plus t3 being this new holding time, where t3 equals exponential lambda, and so on, and so on, and so on, where all of these are independent holding times. So that would seem a reasonable structure for such a thing to have. We can kind of draw a picture of what that would look like. So. Uh, So uh, you have the process that starts off at zero, and then after some amount of time, an arrival happens and you go up to one. Then you wait a bit, then an arrival happens and you go up to two. Wait a bit, goes up to three, and so on. Where each of these times that you're waiting is exponential lambda. So that's another exponential lambda. That is another exponential lambda. And that, and that, even these little ones, and so on. And here we we're starting at zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. So that's what a Poisson process looks like with these exponential holding times. So we've got a theorem here. And the theorem is the process that we've just described with the exponential holding times, independent exponential holding times. So this process I've described above is the Poisson process as in the Poisson process as we described it last time, having the independent Poisson increments. So how are we going to show that? Well, what we need to do first is we need to show that the time until the first arrival is exponentially distributed. We mentioned in the previous subsection that for exponentially distributed things, it's, it's normally easiest to look at the tail probability. So this first arrival time, T1, capital T1, 
What's the property? It's bigger than small t1. Well, saying t1 is bigger than small t1, that's saying that there hasn't been an arrival by time t1. Right? So that's the same as saying the number of arrivals at time t1, maybe minus the number that you started with, but that's zero, is zero. Right? Because here the left-hand side is saying the first arrival is after time t1, and the right-hand side is saying there have been zero arrivals before time t1. But of course, that thing on the right is the Poisson process, so that increment is Poissonly distributed with mean lambda t1. So this gives us an e to the lambda t1, lambda t1 to the naught over naught factorial. Uh, but anything to the naught is 1, naught factorial is 1. So that's e to the minus lambda t, 1. But that is indeed the tail probability of the exponential distribution of x lambda. So t1 does indeed have the exponential lambda distribution. OK, but then we have to show that for the other later holding times. So I'm just going to do t2 as an example, but they're all the same. So the probability that t2 is bigger than t2, given that t1 equals t1, right? So we want this to be exponentially distributed, so we're looking at this uh, tail probability. And again, that's just the probability that there have been no arrivals in the time period between t1 and t1 plus t2, right? Because to say that you're waiting a time more than t2 is saying that between t1 and t1 plus t2, there haven't been any arrivals, so you've had to hold for longer than that. right? But again, this is one of these uh, Poisson probabilities, right? It's e to the minus lambda uh, t1 plus t2 minus t1, but the t1s cancel out, just giving us t2. And obviously there's a lambda t2 to the 0 over 0 factorial, but let's stop writing those now because we've got used to it. So again, that is the tail probability we want. It's the tail probability of an exponential lambda. And we could continue that for t2 and t3 and t4 and so on to show that the Poisson process and the exponential holding time are indeed the same as we hoped. OK, let's see how thinking in terms of exponential holding times can actually help us solve problems that we couldn't do with the old Poisson definition. So here's an example. Customers visit a second-hand bookshop at a rate of land equals 5 customers per hour. Each customer buys a book with probability 0.4. What's the expected time to make 10 sales, and what's the standard deviation? Well, the first thing to notice is that this, this is one of these marked Poisson processes, isn't it, from uh, the last section. And so that means that it itself is a Poisson process with rate p lambda, which is uh, 0.4 times 5 is 2. So customers that buy a book are a Poisson process of rate 2. Customers who buy a book are a Poisson process of rate 2. Again, it wants to know what's the expected time to make 10 sales. So the time to make the first sale is t1. And then there's another holding time t2 to make the second sale, t3 to make the third sale, and so on, up to it takes us t10 to make the tenth sale. So we want the expected value of that. Well, an expectation of a sum is a sum of an expectation, as we know. And these are all exponential distributions of rate lambda. So that's just 10 lots of the expectation of any one of them. I'm going to pick t1. Uh, so that's 10 times, well, t1 is exponentially distributed with rate 2, which means that its mean is 1 over lambda, right? The expectation of a exponential random variable is 1 over lambda. So that's 10 times a half equals 5 hours.
similarly for the variance, variance of T1 plus T10. Because they're independent, we don't have any covariance terms. So it's just 10 lots of the variance of T1 and the variance of an exponential random variable is 1 over lambda squared. So this is 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 4, which gives us 2.5 hours. Uh, the question actually asked for the standard deviation, didn't it? Which is going to be square root of the variance. So it's going to be square root 2.5 hours, uh, which I typed into my calculator earlier and found is 1.5 hours. I guess I should call that the variance hours squared. So the standard deviation is 1.6 hours. So note that we couldn't have done that with the old Poisson definition because that was all about arrivals in a fixed amount of time. Whereas this was a fixed number of arrivals, specifically 10, and looking at the random amount of time. And that's where the exponential distribution is useful. Uh, another follow-up question on this. What's the probability it takes more than an hour to sell the first book? As in the first book of the day, what's the probability that takes more than an hour? So we can solve this one either the exponential distribution way or the Poisson distribution way. In the exponential distribution way, we'd say that this is the probability that t1 is bigger than 1, bigger than 1 hour. And as we know, the tail probability of an... So that uh, t1 is exponential 2, and the tail probability of an exponential distribution is e to the minus 2. I looked that up, it's about 14%, 0.135. So that can be done the exponential distribution way. But it can also be done the Poisson distribution way, because if it takes more than an hour to sell the first book, that means the number of sales at the one hour point has to be zero, right? And so taking that as being distributed as a Poisson distribution with rate 2, that's e to the minus 2, 2 to the 0, over 0 factorial, equals e to the minus 2 again, equals 0.135. So this second question could be done either the exponential way or the Poisson way, whereas this first one could only be done the exponential way.